Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Ian G0 VGS. Just before Christmas, I uh, bought a Hermes Light 2 uh, radio and uh, I've been having a lot of fun with that uh, on 40 meters SSB mainly um, for all sorts of reasons. Um, one of the things I've really enjoyed playing with is the Fetish software. So I thought what I would do is I would just show you the setup I have on Thetis. Uh, this is by no means a tutorial. These are just purely the settings I've put in. Uh, if you think that I can improve them, let me know. And if there's anything uh, that you think I haven't done that I could do to improve things, also let me know. Uh, put it in the comments below and then uh, I can learn from that. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoy the video. So before we look at the setup, um, it's useful to have a look at the version of software that I'm using. And you can see at the top here, I'm using Thetis 2.10.3.4 and I'm using HL2 Beta 2 by MI0BOT, which adds some stuff for the Hermes Light. So we'll go to setup and you can see there are lots of tabs here. I'm not going to go through um, half of these because to be fair, I don't know what a lot of them do um, as yet. Um, so I'm just going to look at the ones that I've made any changes to. If you think there's somewhere that I've missed and that I can improve things, please let me know. So if we look at the general tab, you can see that there are a set of tabs underneath it. And again, we're not going to go through all of these. But the first one is the hardware tab. And this drop down chooses your radio for you. And you can see here that most of them are the Anan, but up at the top, we've got Hermes and Hermes Lite uh, because I'm using that particular fork by MI0BOT. Underneath there, we've got the region set as the United Kingdom. So that just sets all your band edges, etc., for the United Kingdom. All the rest of this is pretty much a default. But of interest is this part here where it shows the Hermes Light address. You don't need to program that. Literally, Thetis will look on your network and if the um, Hermes Light is on there, it will find it and connect to it. So the next tab we're going to look at is the Options tab. I've only made a couple of changes in here. Uh, one of the truly useful things is the Auto Attenuator here. You can, uh, within the program, set your attenuator in 10 dB steps, or you can set it one, two, three, four, five, however you wish to have it uh, working. I found that by switching the auto attenuator on, the program just deals with it itself and I don't get any error messages. So I just leave this set to auto and it works really, really well. The other thing is that I'm using um, the uh, space bar on the keyboard as a PTT. Now what I've found there is not so much when I'm going to transmit, but when I unkey, uh, quite often I'm unkeying too quickly and that means that I clip the end of my audio. So I might be giving my call sign and it misses the last letter, for example. So I'm changing the RF delay and the PTT delay in order to try and improve that. Uh, what I could do, of course, is just train myself to leave it a little while before I unkey. But, you know, you do tend to forget, don't you, in the middle of a QSO. I haven't got this right yet, and I should probably read the manual a little more. Um, so if you've got any experience with this, uh, please let me know what you've got it set to. Lastly, on this tab, I'm going to look at PA control. And here you can see that I've enabled full duplex. And I've also enabled the PA. If you don't enable the PA here, you're not going to be able to transmit. Next, we'll have a look at audio. And you can see here that there are four tabs for audio, VAC1, VAC2, Options and Advanced. I'm just going to have a look at VAC1. VAC stands for Virtual Audio Cable. Now I'm using a USB microphone and I'm using the standard Windows Audio. I'm using Windows Direct Sound, but as you can see, there are various options and various drivers for that. You also need to enable VAC1. And you can see here that I'm just using the primary uh, sound drivers. Over to the right here, I've changed the sample rate to 48,000. I'm having no issues with that. And the gain for receive and transmit. Uh, this works for me. 
your mileage may and probably will vary. Lastly on this page I want to look at this here. It says bypass VAC for recording playback. Now this refers here to the quick record and playback option. If you click record you'll record whatever you hear uh, on the input. So if you're working another station you'll record their audio. In order to play that back you press play. Now if you don't have this option ticked, you will get all kinds of RF feedback. Trust me, ask me how I know. So you need to click that and then all you need to do is key uh, the PTT, press play and it will play back the section that you recorded. When the recording is finished, you can just speak into the microphone. You don't need to unkey and then rekey. And it works really, really well. I've had a lot of success with this. The next tab is display. And in here you've got various things uh, like the frames per second and the peak text and the CPU meter in milliseconds and various other bits and pieces. You can see here that I've got frames per second set to 60 and I've found it useful to be able to see uh, what my frames per second are. So I've ticked this show frames per second box and you can also show temperature and current as well and if you look here at the top left you'll see there's 60 there and that is showing me that I'm currently running 60 frames per second that shows me that my PC is refreshing really well. The next thing I'm going to look at is the transmit tab and in here this is where you set your profile so things like equalization etc you can see here that I've got one called Ian USB SSB and that is for my USB microphone on single sideband. I could also have additional profiles that said uh, SSB DX or SSB Rack Tube for example. I could also set one up for FM. There may be more than one amateur in the house using the radio in which case you can set up profiles for them. So lots and lots of profiles you can set up for different occasions and they're very simple to switch. You can see over the right here that I've got some more profiles in here and they're just profiles that I've been able to get hold of and you can experiment with different profiles to see what suits your voice. The only other thing I've changed here is the carrier level for AM. It's set at 100, I've turned this down to 50. Uh, I'm not an AM user, but just in case I ever switch to AM and do transmit, I don't believe it's a good thing to have AM transmitting at the full transmitter output. The next tab is the appearance tab. And within here we've got, again, multiple tabs and multiple options that we can use. The very first one is general and that shows us skins and you can download all kinds of skins uh, to go on to your uh, particular Thetis. Uh, I'm just using Blue Mix which I really enjoy. It's nice and clean, very easy to see. If we go to multimeters then you can see here that there are all kinds of different meters that we can use and you can see here that I've got quite a few that I use and I use two different containers one for the top set of meters and one for the bottom set of meters. That means I can move them around at will uh, without having one huge block of meters. The one I want to specifically look at is the Anand multimeter. And the Anand multimeter is this one up here, which is very much like a traditional S meter that you see on a radio. There are a couple of things here that are useful. It's set for 100 watts. And of course, if you're only using five watts, you get very little deflection when you're transmitting. Not that it matters that much, but it's a nice to have. So I've set mine at five watts, and that meant that the transmitted power uh, needle was going up and showing um, whatever it was transmitting on SSB between about two and three and a half watts. It was bouncing around rather alarmingly though. Um, so in order to smooth that out, I made some changes up here with update, attack and decay. And it's a lot smoother now. I'll be coming back to another tab in setup uh, before I'm finished. Uh, but one of the things that I get constantly and I'm so pleased about is people telling me that the audio is great. 
uh, without actually asking for a report. And I've had that so many times now that I'm fairly sure I've got mine set correctly. And you do that from the equalizer tab. So up here, equalizer, here it is. And you can see here that I've got an equalizer profile set. You can set a receive equalizer and also a transmit equalizer. I've just got the transmit one set. Uh, now it should be stated that uh, this depends on your microphone. I'm using uh, a simple USB uh, microphone. Uh, looks a little bit like a studio mic, but it definitely isn't. It cost me about £20, I think, when I bought it. And it's a Thoman uh, Fun Generation USB one. Uh, I think it's about £20. You can still get them. Uh, really nice little microphone. Um, and you can actually change your frequency uh, bands here. I haven't. I've just left them at default. Now, I've used microphones for quite a long time, and I'm fairly uh, used to uh, my voice and where it needs to be equalized. So I've put this in uh, just roughly uh, to suit my voice and it seems to have just hit the sweet spot. Now I'm very fortunate in that I've got a voice that's fairly rich in harmonics. Um, again, your mileage may vary here and you may need to experiment or perhaps import a few and see if it works for you. On the left here, you can see there's a preamp and I'll come back to that uh, when we've looked at something else. So finally for the setup I just want to look at one more thing. One of the great things um, in Thetis is the ability to control your compression by frequency and that means that you can actually highlight the sections of your voice that you want to compress more than others and give you a good chance of beating that pile up while retaining the quality of the audio. So if we go to the DSP tab and over the right hand side here where it says CFC, you'll see here that we've got another set of equalization options. You can enable CFC and you can also have post CFC enable. So what we end up with here is both pre-compression and post-compression. Again, these are very much experimental from my point of view and I've set here and here uh, and I just happen to have hit the sweet spot for my voice. I rarely use compression very much. Uh, 2 dBs is what I use on Rag2 and if I'm uh, chasing DX I will use between 4 and 6 dB of compression. It seems to work for me. You've also got gains here as well. Uh, I mentioned I would come back to gains. On these meters over the right hand side here You've got various gains and various settings. And by using the gains and the preamp in the equalizer, it allows you to make sure that you're peaking your microphone and your EQ settings and your compression settings without overdriving them. Now, I'm not gonna go through all of that. There's a really good video by Oscar November 7, Oscar Fox Fox. And if you have a look at that, he does a really good job of going through uh, setting up all of these to get them right for you. It works really well. So to finish I just want to mention one or two things that I use all the time uh, when I'm having a QSO on the radio. And the first thing is here this AGC gain. You can see that the slider is showing green. If I right click it it will go white. If I right click it again it goes green. I suggest you leave it at green and what happens here is it auto tracks your noise floor. So basically I've got S8 of noise on 40 meters. I just leave the AGC on auto and it will find that noise floor and literally eliminate it. It just gets rid of it, ignores it. Now obviously the noise floor is still there. It can't go away, but I don't hear it. And that in conjunction with this thing here, Noise Reduction 2, and anybody who runs Thetis will tell you that Noise Reduction 2 is where it's at. Um, it, it just makes it a joy to use. Uh, you don't hear any noise, you only hear the person uh, that you're speaking to, and it's absolutely superb. I just normally run with a 2.7kc filter, but these filters here are truly useful as well. If somebody snuggles up a little bit close to you, you can switch to a different filter just at a click and it enables you to just get rid of those uh, little annoying noises from the side. 
Well, I hope you found that useful. Um, it's such a complex program and there are so many bits and pieces in there. I don't think I've even scratched the surface of it as yet, um, but it's great fun. Uh, I'm having a lot of really good reports um, and there are things that I'm planning on doing, uh, which I'll maybe cover in another video. But until the next time, thanks very much for watching. Cheerio.